Hi everybody, I sorry I couldn't be there today. Uh, the district decided to send me to a conference in Peoria, so uh, I didn't want to leave you hanging. So we are going to go through the video lesson that uh, is going to follow my discussion right here, and you guys will be okay. Um, I I like to follow up the the portfolio project with a photo analysis project uh, where we're analyzing different photos and deciding what technically makes them good and what technically makes them um, have issues. So. Uh, we'll, we'll talk you through the process, and that's what we're going to work on today. As we look at the lesson plans for today, notice that we're going to look at analyzing the photo. Uh, we're going to look at some things that we've talked about in the past, so that center of visual interest, uh, you're going to hear me nickname that or abbreviate to CVI. Uh, a lot of times I call it the, the focal point. Both of those things mean the same thing. So where is your eye drawn when you look at the photo? Those are one of the things that we'll look at when we analyze the photo. Some other things that we're going to look at are the technical matters, and those are going to be kind of wrapped up in some terms called like framing we've heard before. Balance is a little new. We'll take a quick look at that today, and there's some literature you guys can look at that will help out with, with balance. Lighting we've talked about. Um, there's some other things, some common sense things I want you to think about with lighting as well. So what time of day, whether it be indoor or outdoor lighting, and those kind of things. And depth of field we've talked about. So those are pretty familiar with us. We'll look at a couple other technical matters when we analyze photos as well. The graphic elements that we're going to look at, shapes, lines, we've talked about diagonal lines, we've talked about how curved things kind of guide our eyes around the page, around the photo. So those are going to be important for us. Texture, um, the, the uh, field is created by light and shadows. So we'll look at those. Our tone, contrast, we'll talk a little bit about today. And then we're going to look at perspective being that 3D effect that we're used to hearing about. So that, that's nothing new to us as, as well. We are going to do some photo analyses, so we'll look at those and, and um, look at, start off with the example. Um, go ahead and click on that when you guys are ready, and it'll open up. And we see that it opens up with an example photo. This is the photo that we'll look at. And as you go through, notice the example as you look at it kind of guides you through some of the questions that we're going to be asking when we analyze the photo. Now, instead of looking at the photo and saying, that's a great photo or that's a really horrible photo, we're going to look at, is it a good photo in terms of its technical aspects? So the first question, obviously, is going to go through and say what kind of photo it is. And we've added one extra category into the mix of what we're used to. So we have our regular portrait, still life, sport, landscape, and architecture, but we've added in candid. Now, keep in mind the difference between a portrait and a candid is that the candid, we're not paying attention to quality lighting. We don't have studio lights or anything like that, or we don't have the right light coming from the sun. We also don't pay attention to the background. Okay. The portrait is not only posed, but we pay attention to the lighting. We pay attention to the arrangement. We pay attention to the background to make sure all that was working together so there was time put into it. Candid might be a post shot, but it's more or less, hey, stand right there, click, done, move on. So it's not really planned out. Um, the other type of candid is obviously when a person either doesn't know the, the we're taking a picture or we're taking a picture and that person goes about his or her business. Okay? So candid's fall in those categories. So make sure you differentiate between a portrait, which is planned, and a candid, which is either planned or you know, like spur of the moment or staged. So the big difference there. Uh, we're going to look at the photographer's intention. So based on what we see, what do we think the photographer was trying to do? And how is the photographer trying to do that? Question three, we're looking at the focal point. So that center of visual interest is what we're looking for there. And how is that created? Of course, then we move on to technical matters and graphic elements. Uh, for four and five, we're going to look at those in just a moment. Five shows us the... Uh, what else is in the background? What else is going on? What else helps us know something else about the photo? Remember we say that a photo is worth a thousand words? Okay, well, what, what's it telling us? You know, maybe it tells us what time of day. Maybe it tells us what, whether this shot was taken indoors or outdoors. Okay, for instance, if we look back up on this cupcake, we see this glare right here. Oops, notice that that glare is kind of a, a, a bluish white color that tells me that that's fluorescent lights that tells me that this shot was done inside 
If it was outside, we would have more of a yellowish kind of light that's usually emitted from the sun. So we'd be able to tell the difference, a warmer color. So some of those things we can tell. If it's outside, we can usually tell season, we can tell approximate time of day, those kind of things that can help us out. Next up, we're looking at number, number seven. What's that emotional or physical impact that we get as a viewer from looking at this photograph? And sometimes it may sound kind of weird. Uh, there are some photos that can actually have a physical impact on us, and we'll see some of those as we go throughout the semester. Um, next up, how does this photo relate to other photographs? Now, this is really important that you've seen of this type. So uh, I'm not talking about this, this is a photograph of still life of cupcakes. How does this match up to photographs of other cupcakes we've seen? Well, our example here, the person tells us, uh, usually when I see pictures of cupcakes, it's one cupcake. It's not a big old batch of cupcakes all together. And, you know, everything's all, all set up so it looks so, so delicious. So you just see one cupcake by itself. So that's a valid answer. And then we're going to tell, do I like this or do I not like this photograph based on those technical matters we just looked at. Okay, that gets us kind of an idea of where we're headed with when we analyze it. Now, as far as those technical matters and the graphic elements, that's where we need to check out what's going on. Okay, we have two options. One, we can look at the photography textbook. It's on the bookcases in the back of the room. Look on page 336. There's a visual elements chart that will help talk us through. The other option is, and the link's right here for us, click on the link. It's going to pop open. Uh, this website that has some really cool information for us. The ones I want you to pay the most attention to, if you drop down to where it has the uh, pattern, volume, lighting, texture, tone link, lesson three, go ahead and click on that one. Those are some that are out there that we haven't necessarily talked about yet, so make sure you're watching those. Pattern, obviously, repetition of shapes and forms throughout a photo can help out. Texture is when we have the, the, the interaction of light and dark to make areas that maybe you would like to reach out and feel it. Okay. And then tone is described down here in the bottom. It's the, the use of lights and darks. So if it's um, extreme one way or the other, then there's a way that we can describe it as either low key or high key. And if I flip over to that next page and scroll down to the bottom, we notice that the low key tends to have a lot of dark colors in it, and the high key tone tends to have a lot of uh, brights or whites in it. Okay, so you can watch for that. Contrast, we're also used to seeing contrast. Um, if we're talking about contrast, those would be a high contrast. Everything's crisp, overdone, so the whites are really crisp, overdone whites, and the blacks are really crisp, overdone blacks. And the colors seem like they're really oversaturated. A low contrast is kind of washed out. And you'll be able to tell the difference there. And so the framing, perspective, all those things we should be able to check out. We should be able to see. Okay, I do want to flip back and I want to look at balance. Okay, when we look at balance, uh, there's couple different ways we can look at it and this is one that I mentioned to you guys we're going to ch be checking out. It's kind of cool that it's in here. So balance as we look at it and I'll say the teeter-totter emblem in here that kind of helps out. We have symmetrical balance or formal balance where it's even on both sides. We also have a version of balance where even though it's not the same size it's just like we've turned the teeter-totter a little bit. That's still symmetrical. Okay, so that's all good. So we have formal balance, if you could think about it being even. Okay, even though we have it twisted, it's still even. So it's, that, that creates that balance, teeter-totter effect. All right, now take a look at this one. Notice that we have two building structures over here and one building structure over here. So if you look at your teeter-totter, it's asymmetrical or informal balance because two on one side, one on the other. What makes this actually work is that the one on the right, building structure on the right, is bigger than the two structures that are in the background and seem smaller on the left. That's what creates the balance. Okay, as you go through your assignment, make sure you check out 
all of the aspects of, of the assignment. And so let's jump back. Notice on the bottom of the page, you have five photos that you're going to analyze. Make sure you use that reference website that I just showed you as a guide. When you click on the first photo, you're going to look at the photo. Right below the photo has the form that you're going to fill out. This goes to a Google form that only I'm going to see. Uh, make sure that you do fill out your, your real first and last name. You do get 25 points per photo on this, so make sure you do this properly. Email address so I know who you are and I can verify that. Fill out the whole form. When you get down to the bottom, here's the part where a lot of people keep up on. They forget to scroll, so make sure you scroll all the way down. When you get done, hit the submit button. Do not leave this page until you know that the submission has gone through. So when you get the OK, if it's gone through, then you can leave the page. If you leave the page too early, the submission won't go through and then your information will be lost. Whatever you guys do not get done in class, it's your responsibility to finish that up before next class, so make sure you take care of that. If you have any questions along the way, make sure you email me and I'll get back to you as soon as you can.